today, I'm going to show you how to create a jar of leeches. The things we'll need to create our leech jar is one glass jar. I am using a four ounce jar that's got little measurements on the side. I will try to put a link in the description to a very similar one. But honestly, you could definitely recycle a jar like a horseradish jar or some sauces come in little jars like this. A mason jar would work great. Anything like that will do. We are going to use some clear alcohol-free styling gel, and I like the kind that I can get at the dollar store here in the States, but if you don't have access to that and you don't have access to the styling gel, by all means, you could use hand sanitizer as long as it's the really thick kind. I know that's kind of a hot commodity at the moment, but if you have access to it, um, you could definitely use that. You could also use aloe vera like you'd use on a sunburn as long as it's the clear kind, and if you don't have access to any of those, you could definitely use a resin um, to set your jar in as well. We are going to use some bronze brushed metal acrylic paint. We are going to use some black mesh or gauze. You could also use a tool for this. We just want that meshy quality. We are going to need some pliers, scissors, and a foam brush. I'm also going to incorporate some tweezers, and these are the kind that you would potentially find at a home improvement store. Um, they usually come in a pack of five or six. If you are here in the States, Harper Freight has a set of these for just a couple dollars. And the smaller ones are really great accessories to have for your Cricut. We're gonna use two different sizes of jump rings. And I am going to use the 0.2 inch and 0.4 inch sizes. And if you're um, on the metric system, that is a six millimeter and 11 millimeter jump ring. We are going to use the Reynolds Wrap non-stick aluminum foil. It's very important that it is the non-stick kind. Um, and if you don't have this, we're going to go ahead and just use glass, like the bottom of a jar, a bottom of a 9 by 13 cooking pan, anything like that. We just want to be able to release the hot glue off of our surface easily, and any of those will work for that. We are going to use a hot glue gun and black hot glue. Make sure you have an extra stick with you just in case. As well as some light colored jute twine and a rubber band. And finally, our label printed on sticker paper and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take the lid off of our jar here and we are going to paint it with our bronze acrylic paint. And I'm just doing that so that it's not white. If your lid is black or something like that, by all means, skip this. Um, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a plasticky white that would be showing beneath our black gauze. And once our lid is painted, we can continue with the rest of the jar. Now we're going to take our nonstick foil, and the nonstick side is the dull side. The shiny side is just the regular foil. So you want to make sure you're putting it dull side up. But we're going to take our hot glue gun that is loaded with our black hot glue, and we are going to start to make our little leeches. And now we're gonna let our little leeches dry for a couple minutes. And once they cool, we can literally pull them right off of this foil. Okay, so now that our little leeches have dried, we're literally just going to peel them right off of the foil. It's amazing how easy these come off of this foil. And because we don't want our little leeches to be flat, let me see if you guys can see this. They're really flat on one side, and because we don't want that, I'm actually going to flip them all over, and I'm going to put more hot glue on them so that they get more of a three-dimensional look. Okay, so if any of your little leeches, as you're getting the 3D on them, uh, spill over, just take a pair of scissors and trim the excess off. And then you can just kind of round it out a little bit. And he'll get his little 3D shape back and be more like the shape of the leech. And once we have our little handful of leeches, we can start to put together our jar. And I actually got the idea to make this jar from one of you guys. Um, one of you wrote to me, Robin, 
um, and said that she was inspired to make her own little leech jar because of my jellyfish stingers. And she used that technique with the black hot glue. And I thought, well, that's a really great idea. So I um, am doing a very similar version of her jar. I'm going to add a few little tweaks of my own to it. But uh, yeah, we're using a very similar method like we did with the jellyfish stingers and I have done with countless other things. So we are making our little black leeches. So thank you, Robin, for sending me your little jar so that we can make a jar here on the channel. Once our leeches are all made, we're gonna go ahead and fill our jar with some of our clear styling gel. And then I'm actually going to use a cooking skewer to help me place my little leeches in the jar. And once we fill it, just kind of give it a good little tap. Get some of the bigger gaps of air bubbles out. And don't fill it all the way up because you want to have room to be able to place your little leeches. And then we're just going to put them in. Okay, so with our little leeches, you can place as many or as few as you'd like in there. You can put them at whatever position you'd like to. And then again, just give it a good little tap to get out any of the bigger air bubbles. And if you see any you don't like, you can kind of have your cooking skewer help you to get rid of it. And then I'm going to fill it up the rest of the way. And now that our jar is all the way filled up, we can cap it back up. The next thing I'm going to do is take my black mesh, and I actually doubled mine over. And we are going to place it over our jar, pulling it snug on top of the lid here. And then I'm going to take my rubber band, and I am just going to place it around the jar. And now I'm gonna take scissors and cut the excess mesh off. Okay, and we wanna get it as trimmed as tight as we can. And then just kind of take your thumb and shove some of the excess up underneath that rubber band. And if need be, go back through with your scissors and trim it up even tighter. Just so when we take our jute twine to this, it doesn't hang out of the bottom. And now we can take our jute twine and we're going to wrap it around the neck of the bottle and hide the little seam that we made with our rubber band. And we're gonna wrap this just like we have several other bottles before. We're going to make our U and we're going to capture that U with our twine and once we've made a couple loops around we can then let go of our loop pull up on the bottom to tighten that and we can continue to wrap and really try to get all of your little black threads from your mesh trapped in there And once we've wrapped the top, we can cut the end, put it through the loop, and then we're going to pull down on the loop until it cinches everything tight and pulls the end behind. And then we can trim it flush. And once we trim that flush, just pull behind just a little more to get that end to go behind the rest of our cording and then trim this one flush as well. And then we can kind of mess with our wrap here to get it exactly the way we want and make sure that we don't have any of those little black threads 
hanging out from underneath of it. Okay, now this is optional, but I like to sometimes age my jute twine a little bit, and it also helps get rid of a little bit of the wispies that you get on the side, and I'm going to do that with a lighter. If you are underage, please make sure you have adult supervision, um, and even if you are of age, just be careful that you don't light the whole thing on fire. We are just going to get it close so that it singes some of those little embers and adds a little bit of a discoloration, which I love because I feel like it just gives it an aged look. And we're just gonna quickly go around and age up our twine. And we have a nice aged look on our twine then. Okay, so the next part is completely optional, but I felt like if you had a jar of leeches that you were going to use for potion making or medicinal purposes or whatever the case may be, I felt like you'd have a way to get it out of the jar. So that's where the tweezers come in. So we are actually going to use our jump rings to create a little harness, I guess you could call it, or holster for our tweezers on the side of the jar. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my smaller jump ring and we're going to place it around a couple of the threads. And then I'm going to take my larger jump ring and place it around the smaller jump ring so it comes out this way so that we have a place to put our tweezers. As you can see, I've opened up my little jump ring here and I'm going to place it on a couple of our strings here. And then I'm gonna tighten it back up. And then spin your jump ring so that the back is on the inside of your string. And that leaves us with that little loop. And now I'm going to hook the larger ring around the smaller one. And again, I'm going to reclamp that shut. And once we get our little loop on, we should have a little holster for our tweezers. Okay, and now that we have our little tweezers that are on our jar, I'm gonna go ahead and add our label. And that's pretty much gonna finish this one off. So just like normal, I went around the outside edge with a matching marker. And I've included a couple different sizes of this label in the file, just so then that way you guys can um, use whatever size jar you have and it will uh, still get the job done for you. So just so you guys know, leeches have not only been used for thousands of years, even in Egyptian times, they were used for medicinal purposes. Um, they are also used in Harry Potter, in the polyjuice potion, and uh, things like that. And they're actually making a resurgence now and being used with plastic surgery and things like that to help the circulation around things like noses and appendages to keep the blood from clotting and to get the circulation going. So these little leeches are still being used today to do pretty much what they did thousands of years ago. Um, and, you know, they, uh, they make sure that they get rid of the little leeches after they've actually um, adhered to someone. So I wanted to make sure that this stated that these were unsucculated leeches because that's what you need for potion making and really for medicinal purposes as well. Okay, so I wanna make sure I get this good and straight since I've got these little measurements on the side. Um, I don't want it to be even just a hair crooked. And with our mesh top and our little tweezer embellishment to remove our leeches, there you have it. Our leech jar, perfect for potion making, medicinal purposes, a fun Halloween jar, anything like that. 
This will be a great addition to our potion prop collection we've been making along the way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much.